realize that you collect the Sunday school off. Oh. Because what does the, the Bible say? 
sees that man's wisdom is foolishness. So when we're talking about getting true wisdom, we're looking at getting the wisdom of God, knowing the mind of God. Because if we go by man's wisdom, man's quote-unquote wisdom is not always correct. And we go back to 1492, man's wisdom said, Christopher Columbus, you go too far, you're going to fall off the face of the earth. We can sit here in 2018 and laugh at that and say that they were ridiculous, but they were going off man's wisdom. The Bible also talks about man's science. We talked about this probably about three weeks ago, I think it was. What did Paul write to Timothy? He said, Science falls asleep, so called. So man performs his quote unquote science, but it's not always accurate because it doesn't line up with the Word of God. And there are things that man pushes off as fact when it's really not fact. We've seen that in the school system with evolution. They call it a theory, and that's exactly what it is. It's a theory. <coughs> it's not fact. It is science falsely so called. So when we get down to it, God's ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. Therefore, when we talk about wisdom and knowledge, it's not man's wisdom and knowledge that God is imparting to us, but it's his wisdom and knowledge. And when we talk about wisdom and knowledge, that there are two big differences. Knowledge is information. Information concerning something. Wisdom is the knowledge of how to apply or work out that situation. So it goes a little bit farther. So we're kind of going to be backtracking a little bit today. Or going back a step when it comes to wisdom and knowledge. And we're going to be talking about knowledge. And more specifically, the gift of knowledge. Or the word of knowledge. If someone would please... Read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Someone else, Luke chapter 11 and verse 52. Luke 11, 52. Last week, and then second, he mentioned the word of knowledge. 
when it comes to our study, we're not going with the best teaching method, but we're going to go right down through the list of the way it's listed in the scriptures. So we're going to look at the word of knowledge second. It's second on the list. And, when we, and why is it mentioned second? Well, perhaps it's mentioned second because of what is mentioned in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. What does Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 state concerning wisdom? Some of the people split time. 
But you're not going to pull all the people all the time. But the word of knowledge is something that comes from God. Like I say, it doesn't have to be the application part. But it's just a word of knowledge. And sometimes people can manufacture it have a natural knowledge, too. They might not. It would be easy for somebody to say, I know we all know Sister Tina's going through something right now. And, but it would be something for, not that for any of us to go up and say, Sister Tina, God told us that God's going to pull you through. And give you strength through this. In all honesty, that could be manufactured naturally if the person really wanted to because it's something they already know. Is it God? No. Should that be done? No. But it's very easy to abuse this gift. And it is probably the most abused for that reason. But when it comes to the word of knowledge, the information itself, and when it comes to all the gifts in general, you realize that it's not information that's conjured up in our head, but it's something that God himself drops into our spirit. And a word of knowledge comes forth by the giver. It's not something that God dropped in their head or just conjured up. It's something that he dropped, that his spirit drops in their spirit. Because when our head gets there, then our head gets into the way. The gifts of the spirit do not work on a natural level. Do they work on everyday things? Absolutely. What, what do I mean by natural level? They don't work in a sense, through our carnal minds, through this flesh of the mind, but it's rather something that God himself drops into our spirit. So what is knowledge? According to Strong's Greek, Greek Dictionary, taken from the word of knowledge verse itself, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 8, it means knowing, the act of knowing, by implication, just know it. Knowing, knowledge, or it does have science, which when the Bible refers to science, or you see in it, it's talking about true science. Science that lines up with the Word of God. Not science, quote unquote, falsely so called, but rather true knowledge that lies, um, true science that lines up with the Word of God. And when we get down to it in one word, knowledge, is information. That's exactly what it is. As we've already said this morning, whether it's information or how to fix something, information, whether God's telling somebody something that's going on in your own life that no one else knows, it's information. That's all it is. It's not how to fix it. I could come up and say, God's going to, said he's going to heal you, but I can't tell you that God told me that he's got, you got to do this or <coughs> When it comes to um, naming the leper in the Bible, the little uh, server girl, yeah, she could have told him that God's going to heal him. But she went farther. She told him, you got to go dip in the river seven times. That's the sip the, in the Jordan River seven times. That's the stipulation. So the knowledge that God was going to heal him would be more along the lines of the word of knowledge, whereas the information that he had to dip in the river seven times would have been the gift of wisdom on the wisdom application part is this is what he had to do. So knowledge is information concerning something, while wisdom is knowledge of how to apply this information. The gift of knowledge is heavenly knowledge, knowledge dropped into one spirit by the Holy Ghost. And when we look at knowledge in general, the Bible refers to knowledge as a key. Luke 11 and verse 52, that was already read this morning. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in, ye hindered. What was God talking about at this time? There are several, di several different things you can find out with through commentaries. But when we're doing Bible study, commentary, those side notes in study Bibles, those are man's word. The only inspired words in a study Bible 
are the words that God penned down years and years ago. The side notes are not inspired. The Word of God is. Commentaries are not the inspired Word of God. They are man's thoughts. Men who study and try to know the Word of God, but they are not the inspired Word of God. <coughs> but when we're sitting this out, John Wesley wrote, he, when this first man was he had obscured, obscured and destroyed the knowledge of the Messiah, which is the key of both the present and the future kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of grace and glory. He also said, perhaps he said that it was perhaps he, an extraordinary ability to understand and explain the Old Testament types of prophecy. So that's what he told us that thought was happening in this verse. But when we sit down and look at it, regardless of if they want to go into detail that it was about the types and the prophecies of the Old Testament, trying to study it out and know it, it doesn't matter. What we do know is that these scribes had a particular knowledge. They had information concerning something. And they said, you know what, I don't want to go there. So what they did was they kept the information to themselves. And in doing so, they hindered anyone else from obtaining the same information. What was this if we have fights in the natural? Ever worked in a workplace where there were people that thought that if they had all the information and didn't share with anybody that they were more important, it made them feel special, put them higher on their totem pole? Not that it really did, but they didn't want anybody to know what they knew. That's kind of the boat that these scribes were in. I have knowledge, but I'm not sharing it with you. And Jesus is rebuking them and saying, Well, what's you for you have done this? If we would apply it to the church world today, you realize that there are a lot of preachers out there that know of the reality of hell, but they refuse to teach it. There are people out there with the reality that if people do not confess their sins, that they're going to go to hell. But they won't preach on sin because it's a negative connotation. What is that? That is people that are hindering others and they are keeping it to themselves. They have the key of knowledge, but they don't want to go there for whatever reason. And they don't want to bother anybody else with it. So they're going to keep it locked up for themselves. Knowledge is a key that unlocks a world of doors. Wisdom is the key that will unlock a lot of doors as well, but knowledge itself, you have any idea how, ever want to do something before, but you don't know how to do it? You need the information first. You need instruction, perhaps. You need guidance. That is knowledge. It is a key that will unlock that door. And that's exactly what God is talking about here. These scribes have the key of knowledge, but they're not going to let anybody else have that key. <laughs> they are preventing them. And why is knowledge a key? What does Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 say? Hosea 4, 6. So in Hosea 4, 6, what did God say? That my people perish for a lack of wisdom? So, not wisdom. My people perish because of lack of my word? So, he said my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Knowledge is what was why his people were perishing. Why is some of the church perishing today? Because there are preachers who want to preach a good gospel message that will fill their church, but they don't want to preach the whole gospel message. They don't want to preach about heaven. They don't want to preach about hell. But why? Because it doesn't leave a good feeling in people. They can't pack the pews that way. They can't pack the pockets that way. And because of that, there are people that are on their way going to hell right now because they are sitting in a mega church or a church where the preacher has never preached the full gospel message. These are people that are hungry 
heard God, that want to know Him, like never before, have a relationship with Him, that are striving to do the best that they can, but they are perishing and they are going to hell for one reason, because their scribe, their pastor, their shepherd doesn't want to be bothered with that knowledge, and they're keeping the key locked up, hidden up, and because of a lack of knowledge, those people are perishing. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees and the scribes for withholding information. What does Matthew chapter 23 and verse 13 say? Matthew 23 and verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against, against men. For ye neither go in yourself, neither suffer be them that are entering to go in. We find Jesus rebuking them, and then we take this verse and lay it side by side with Luke chapter 11 and verse 52. We would find that they're almost practically identical. We find people containing the key of knowledge. They have the information, but they're not sharing it with others. They are seeing those around them that if they would only tell them about heaven or hell, they would be fine. If they would tell them about Jesus Christ and how to have a personal relationship with them, but they are refusing to do so, and they are shutting up heaven and preventing people from entering in. When we look at knowledge, it is not just a key, but there is a spirit of knowledge as well. If someone would please read Isaiah chapter 11, 2 through 4, Isaiah 11, 2 through 4, and Ephesians chapter 1, 17 through 19. Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, Isaiah in the chapter 11, 2 through 4. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord and shall make him a quick understanding and the fear of the Lord. He shall not to reject the soul of the God to give it, to go back to the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall be judged for and grow back to be for me. He shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and the breath of his lips shall be slain with it. Yes, this is a prophetic message concerning the Messiah. But he said, and he shall go forth with a spirit of knowledge. What about Ephesians chapter 1, 17 through 19? Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of joy, Father of joy, will take unto you the spirit of wisdom and, and revelation in the knowledge of it. So he'll give him the spirit of wisdom and knowledge of him. When we look at knowledge, it is also a spirit. And we're going to get to that place where we obtain it, we must first fear God. What does Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 26 say? Ecclesiastes 2, 26. Ecclesiastes 2.26, yes. For God giveth thy name, that is good in his sight, of wisdom and knowledge and joy, but to the sinner he giveth travail to gather and to eat, but that he may give. To him that is good before God, this also is added in vexation of the Spirit. And can you read that first phrase one more time, please, brother? For God, is, for God giveth to a man that is good in his first sight. For God giveth to a man what? That is good in his sight. And what does he give a brother? Wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom 
knowledge, and I believe joy as well added over there. So he gives them wisdom and knowledge. And we are going to first get wisdom and knowledge. It's going to begin when we first fear God and have an excellent relationship with him. And when we look at Ephesians chapter 1, 17 through 19, this is, I'm a firm believer of praying scriptures, and this is one passage we can read to become a visionary. And we're going to become a missionary. That is the spirit of knowledge. But we need to seek the mind of God. When people say, I, need to, I want to know the mind of God. I want to seek the mind of God. What do they mean? What are they really asking for? They're asking to have a word of knowledge. Not the gift of the word of knowledge. But they want to have a word of knowledge for themselves from God. <coughs> Excuse me. That personal, personal communication with God to the point where God speaks to you in your spirit is to have a word of knowledge from God. Once again, it's not the gift of the word of knowledge, but a word of knowledge to God. Not a point where, Brother Eli, God, you feel God direct me with a little nudge or a point, but where, to the point where God speaks something directly into your spirit that it sounds practically like an audible voice. That is the word of knowledge. That is when God speaks to you. And we go back to Elijah when he was facing the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. He spent 40 days in the wilderness and he comes to a cave. And I don't know if I have this down my notes. But in 1 Kings chapter 19, First Kings 19 and verses 11 through 13, the Bible states this. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in fire. And after the fire... A still small voice. And it was so that Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What dost doest thou here, Elijah? The world we're living in, you know, when it comes to God, people are constantly asking God for signs. God, if this is what you want me to do, just give me a sign. It's almost like cheating type thing. God, if you want me to do this, just give me a sign, do this, prove yourself to me. But we just read here that God sent by a fire, an earthquake. But was God in the fire or the earthquake? No. How many people today will be deceived by that because they're looking for the signs and the wonders? But where was God? He was that still, small voice. What is that still a small voice? That was the voice of God speaking to the spirit of Elijah and giving him a word of knowledge. I didn't say it was the gift of knowledge. It was a word of knowledge. The same thing can be true in our own lives that we get to the point of God with God that he speaks to us one on one. And we get a word from God, a word of knowledge. Not looking for a sign, not looking for a watch, but hearing the voice of God. Now the gift of knowledge is a little bit different than the word of knowledge. Because the gift of knowledge is for those who have the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking out of the tongues. Can one speak to God without the gift? Absolutely. But what is the purpose of the gifts of the Spirit? It is to profit with all. Yes, there's personal edification, but the purpose of the gift of the Spirit is to pull in the unbeliever, to encourage the saints, and it is to profit the ministry. So when we look at the gift of knowledge, more than likely, it can be used in a public setting. It can be used one-on-one. -on -one. But it's when God gives a word for somebody else or a group 
say, I'm going to do this, or so forth. Whatever the Lord can be. That is the gift of knowledge. And does the gift of knowledge have to be just about spiritual things? Does it have to be about, if God said if you read your Bible that this will happen. God said that if you would lean on Him and just draw close to Him that He will bring you through. Is that the only way in which the word of knowledge can be used? No. Oh, the word of knowledge can be used in our everyday life as well. It is not a head knowledge. It does not come through the brain. But rather it is information that God drops into your spirit about absolutely anything. Perhaps, Brother Dennis, you're stuck on a vehicle. You don't know what to do. And all of a sudden, God speaks to your spirit and allows that gift to be active in your life. What is that? That is the word of knowledge. And the gift can be used at any time. And it does not just have to be about spiritual things. Maybe they were in a different situation. Maybe uh, Brother Eli is struggling with something he's working on the side at home. And Brother Eli comes up to him and said, Brother Eli, um, Brother Eli, God told me to tell you this, and this is how you need to do it. That is a word of knowledge. It doesn't have to just be about the spiritual. It can be about something in our everyday lives. It can be something natural. But the gifts of the Spirit are not processed through our natural means. They're not processed through the mind. It is the Holy Ghost dropping them into our spirit. Does anybody have any thoughts, anything that they want to add, any questions at this point? If not, unless God changes it when we end up after the gifts of the Spirit, we should be starting a study on the book of Psalms. Now, I know when I do things, we go in depth. We're not going to go in depth in every verse, but I do feel God leading me to that we're going to do a study on the book of Psalms. So if you want to start reading the book of Psalms and preparing for that, that would be great. But right now, let us just bow our heads and prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and will continue to do. Lord, we thank you that you're God who reigns on high and that there's none like you, Lord. Even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below, and no attack of the enemy may penetrate. We pray that our hearts and our minds will be in a good school, that your word may fall upon it, upon good soil that we may remember it throughout the week. But even greater than that, that we apply it to our lives. I know that the song leader and the musicians, as they lead us in the song, should have us to sing. As they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords. I know that the pastor's mind and his lips to bring forth the word. You have us to sing that I hear today, Lord. And may it fall on good soil, that we may be transformed in your very image like never before, Lord. That we may know you like never before, Lord. I will say so the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge, Lord. May we strive to know you like never before. May we strive to build that personal relationship, Lord, that we may be transformed to the very image of Jesus Christ, that when they, that we may know that I will shower down, that if we would pass away right here, right now, Lord, that we've done everything within our ability to get to you, that we've confessed our sins, and if something should happen right now, Lord, that we would know that we would be in your presence right now. Lord, I pray that you be with each one of us today, Lord. May we just have a desire to go deeper in you like never before. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.